the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salad dressing better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. Well, a couple of days ago, the great Gildersleeve's niece Marjorie and her husband Bronco left on their vacation. So the little house next door to the water commissioner is empty and quiet. In fact, things are pretty quiet around the great Gildersleeve's house, too. Yeah, see what's in the paper today. Hi, George, it doesn't seem like the same house without Marjorie's twins galloping in and out. Yeah, kind of missed the little tykes. Uncle, have you seen my magazine? Hmm? My magazine, the one I was reading. Leroy, I don't pay any attention to the magazines around here. The one that's got Esther Williams on the cover. Oh, that one. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. Now, quit poking around. I'm trying to read the paper. Lift your feet up a second. Uh, Not there. Is it behind you? Leroy. Get up a second, will you, Unc? Oh, oh my goodness, Leroy, can't you? Here it is. You were sitting on it. Yeah. All right. Now run along. I want to show you something, Unc. Look here. Yeah, I bet I know what's coming. Find the seven faces in this picture and win a Shetland pony. No, nope, better than that even. Here. Here, look at that. Whoop. A boy dressed in fish. What a picture. Yeah, he's got strings of fish all around him. He's wearing them like a suit. Keen, huh? Hmm. Double-breasted halibut. <laughs> Those aren't halibut. They're not? Those are bass. Boy, what I wouldn't give to catch fish like that. Can we go fishing, Unc? Not right now. I'm reading the paper. Can we go, Unc? It's good for a little kid to go fishing. It's good for him to get outdoors. Yes, yes. The fish are biting out of Grass Lake tomorrow, Saturday. Can we go tomorrow, can we, Unc? You're all right, Leroy. I'll take you fishing at Grass Lake. But not tomorrow. We'll go next Saturday. Oh, boy, Keen, Unc. You there, Mr. please? In the parlor, Bertie. This is Bailey, James Bates. There's a letter from Miss Marjorie. Letter from Marjorie? Yes, sir. Well, from Honeysuckle Lodge. You wonder how the lovebirds are getting along. Probably just sitting. Smelling the honeysuckle. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what Marjorie has to say. Dear Unky and all, isn't that sweet? How do you know you haven't read it yet? <laughs> Leroy. Dear Unky and all, words cannot express how happy we are. Bronco and I have a lovely room overlooking the lake. The same room we had when we came here on our honeymoon. I wonder if there's any fish in it. In the room? In the lake. Oh. oh, my goodness. Go fish in the backyard. Listen to the letter, Leroy. Okay. It says, it's like reliving a beautiful dream. I'm sure no girl was ever so much in love with her husband. Oh, bless her little heart. Why don't they fish? Leroy. I feel as if the whole world were ours again. At night, when the stars are out, we walk by the shores of the lake. You can fish at night. <laughs> okay. Hand in hand, we walk and count the stars. And I know I'm in heaven. I must be. I will write more later. Give my best to Leroy, to Bertie, and Judge Hooker. And to Gloria McKinley when you see her. Your loving niece, Marjorie. That was a nice letter. Yeah. Marjorie's happy. Love is a wonderful thing. I'd rather catch a bass. <laughs> Leroy, 
enjoy you and your fish. Hey, Uncle, what's doing with you and Miss McKinley? Did she give you the gate? Give me the gate? Shh. Certainly not. In fact, I was just thinking about it. <laughs> like Miss Marjorie said, love is a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bertie. Marjorie's letter had nothing to do with it. How come Miss McKinley hasn't been around, Doc? Well, I've been busy the last few days. She's probably been busy down at Hogan Brothers. Yeah, making goo-goo eyes at that assistant manager, Mr. Huggins. <laughs> goo-goo eyes. Leroy, stop being silly. Huggins is out of the picture. And I left him in the dust long ago. Yeah? I saw him walking down the street with her yesterday. He didn't look very dusty to me. <laughs> Why don't you go out and play, Leroy? I'm playing in here. Where's my hat, Bertie? You going out, Miss Gilfeed? Yes, I think I'll run over to Miss McKinley's for a few minutes. Worried, Unc? No, Leroy. <laughs> what a household. Man has about as much privacy as a goldfish. What kind of fish? Never mind. <laughs> Gloria's mother doesn't answer the door. She'd think I brought this rose for her. <laughs> Leroy with his silly ideas about Huggins. Gloria's probably standing behind the door right now, waiting for me to ring the bell. Probably flopping up her hair, pinching her cheeks. <sighs> Lovely rose. Oop, bug. Yeah, here she comes. Yes? Well, Zeke, Mr. Hawkins. <laughs> oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. Yes. <laughs> Haven't seen you in quite a while. Yes, it has been quite a while. There's something I can do for you, Gildersleeve. Is somebody at the door? No, Gloria, just some fellow from the water department. Oop. Now, look here, Huggins. Oh, it's Rock Morton. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> Hello, Gloria. Come in. Uh, thank you. One side, Huggins. Where have you been, Throckmorton? Where have I been? Well, people leaving on vacations around our house. Pretty busy. Oh, are you leaving on your vacation, Gildersleeve? Congratulations. Have a good time. You no, know, Huggins, let go of my hand. It was my niece. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't know why we're all standing here in the hallway. No, it's kind of crowded. Aren't you needed at the store today, Huggins? Inventory or something? The store is closed today. Oh, it is, huh? Mr. Huggins is taking me out to dinner tonight, Throckmorton. Yes? Yes, I'd ask you to go along, Gildersleeve, but the people we're going with are all quite particular about whom they're seen with. <laughs> now, just a minute, Huggins. Oh, Gildersleeve, stop shaking that rose in my face. Rose? Was that for me, Throckmorton? Oh, uh, Yes. For you. Uh, you better take it outside, Gloria. It has aphis on it. Wilfred. <laughs> Gloria, but I came to ask you. Will you have dinner with me tomorrow? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't tomorrow. I'm going to Grass Lake. Grass Lake? With Mr. Hogan. Oh. Maybe some other time, Throck Morrison. Some other time. <laughs> My back is turned. Taking Gloria to Grass Lake tomorrow. Well, let her go. Isn't going to bother me one bit. You home, Miss Gersley? Yes, I'm home, Bertie. Miss Gersley, you have to one Leroy soon. Yeah, well, tell me about it later, Bertie. I've got a lot of important things on my mind. Yes, sir. You know what he's doing, Miss Gersley? No, Bertie. He's out there fishing in the wash tub. Go over. Fishing in the wash tub. He's having a big time. Yeah, all right, Bertie. I'm trying to think. Fishing in the wash tub. Yes, Bertie. He ain't gonna catch nothing. I know, Bertie. There ain't no fish in that wash tub. That's right. <laughs> but he's fishing. <laughs> What 
the household. That sneaky Huggins. Probably taking Glory out to Grass Lake tomorrow for a picnic. All right, let him take her. He's not any better looking than I am. I don't know, though. Maybe she thinks he is. I wonder what they're going to do out there. Not that I care. Look at here, I've got my fishing line all rigged up. Well, good. I've been trying it out in my wash tub. Caught one sock. <laughs> yes, yes. Gee, I can hardly wait for next Saturday at Grass Lake. Next Saturday? Say, if Gloria and Bert Huggins are going to be there tomorrow. Leroy, I just thought of something. Yeah? Come to think of it, we might go to Grass Lake tomorrow after all. Tomorrow? Certainly. That's when you wanted to go, wasn't it? Yeah, but I already told Piggy I'd go to the show with him tomorrow. Well, tell Piggy you go with him next week. Why are we all of a sudden going to Grass Lake tomorrow? Why, because, well, it's, it's a better day. It's bound to be more fish in the lake tomorrow than next week. Uh, will there? Of course. By George, tomorrow's just the time to go. Okay, Uncle, I'm all ready. I'm going to catch one of those fighting black bats. What are you going to catch, Unc? Yeah, I'm going to catch a water snake. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. There are lots and lots of ways to make a salad special... You can garnish it with fancy radish roses, use slices of fluted cucumbers, or add carrot curls or bits of fresh herbs. You can serve that salad in a handsome salad bowl or on your most elegant platter. But if the salad dressing you use isn't just the right one, you're bound to be disappointed with the results. So take care in your choice of salad dressing. If you want a dressing with a lively, teasing flavor, a flavor that's not too mild, just sharp enough, a flavor that's really delicious, use Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing anywhere because it's made from a secret Kraft recipe, a recipe that was created by Kraft to give you the best qualities of good old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. You'll discover Miracle Whip has a marvelous texture, too, creamy, thick, and smooth as satin, because this dressing is blended thoroughly with special craft beaters. With such remarkable texture and flavor, it's easy to see why Miracle Whip has become America's favorite salad dressing and actually outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. For better-tasting salads with or without fancy touches, make Miracle Whip your salad dressing. Just be sure you see the name Miracle Whip on the jar you buy. Remember, there's only one Miracle Whip... And it's made by Kraft. Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. By George, this is a free country. And it's a public lake. There's no reason why Leroy and I can't go fishing at Grass Lake on the same day Gloria and Bert Huggins are there. Just coincidence. Yeah. The cleverest coincidence I ever planned. Yeah, I'd better stop in the drugstore and get some corks. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? Peavy, I want some bobbing corks. How's that? Corks, Peavy. The kind that tell you when the fish are biting. I don't think I have any corks that smart, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> All my corks know how to do is to hold things in bottles. <laughs> All right, Petey. Just sell me half a dozen big corks to tie on fishing lines. Oh, going fishing, are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, Petey. Up to Grass Lake. Yeah, well, I'll get my cork down. That's a good idea. Are the fish buying? I don't know, Petey. Well, are they going to buy it? I don't know that either. You don't seem any more interested in fishing than a couple of other people who are going up there tomorrow. What's this, Pete? Miss McKinley and Bert Huggins were just in discussing their plans over at Choda. I'm not the least bit interested in their plans, Peavy. What did they say? <laughs> well, she said I'll have a vanilla soda. And... Peavy. That's not the information I'm after. 
What were his plans? Well, he planned to have a strawberry tell you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then she bought a bathing cap. Bathing cap? Seems if it's warm enough, she plans to try a new bathing suit. <laughs> and then Bert bought some suntan lotion. I don't know why he needs suntan lotion with a hide as thick as his. <laughs> he, he didn't buy it for himself. He said he might have to pat some on Miss McKinley. <laughs> huh? He better watch it. You care to take a bottle of the lotion along, Mr. Gilmsley? Petey, I don't burn. <laughs> you look a little burned already. <laughs> what? Now, if the fishing isn't good, you can always row ashore and join the picnickers. It wouldn't hurt to have a bottle along in case Bert runs out. Yes. PV8, you know I wouldn't try to crash their party. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, give me a bottle. Leroy might get a sunburned nose. <laughs> What's the matter with me? I haven't been able to sleep all night. I wish this pillow was Bird Huggins. There. That'll hold him. Now maybe I can go to sleep. I wonder what they're going to do out there tomorrow. I wouldn't trust that Huggins around the corner. I'm trusting it all. Yeah. There they are. There they are, sitting on the beach. And his bulging biceps. Look at him. Covering her with sand. What a corny thing to do. I wonder what they're talking about. Your nose is getting pink, Gloria. Oh, I better put some suntan lotion on it. Oh, now, now, you just let me do that. Where? Oh, oh. Oh, 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 don't let him, Gloria. <laughs> now, hold still. This won't hurt a bit. We mustn't let it burn. It's such a cute little nose. Oh, Bert. Hey, hey. He's not putting lotion on her nose. He's trying to kiss her. <laughs> Gloria. Yeah. What nerve. Trying to kiss her on a public beach. I ought to call the police. Oop, there's a siren. Somebody beat me to it. Yeah, your arm. Huh? What's that? What's the matter? Who's there? I got it. Time to get up, Bunk. Leroy, who set my alarm for 5 o'clock? I did. It's time to go fishing. Fishing? At this hour? Sure. You aren't mad, are you, Unc? Well, no, my boy. At least he didn't get to kiss her. <laughs> kiss who? Never mind, Leroy. What a character. <laughs> More bacon and eggs, Mr. Gill, please? Just one more helping, Bertie. I haven't much of an appetite this early in the morning. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take anything he leaves, Bertie. All right, Leroy. He's just like his uncle. <laughs> I'll get it! <laughs> yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. I wonder who's going around ringing doorbells at this hour. Good morning, Gilda. George, what are you doing up so early? I always get up early. That's why I'm so sound of wind and limb. <laughs> An old goat up before the roosters. Now, Gilda, I happen to see a light in your house, so I came over. Judge, you can't see my lights from your house ten blocks away. Well, Peter did tell me you and Leroy are going fishing this morning. Yeah, I knew it. 
And being an avid fisherman, I happen to know all the best spots for fishing. Well, you don't happen to know what I'm fishing for. <laughs> well, whether it's bass or bluegill, I know the spots to go. And now, course, Judge? I am not inviting myself. Oh, no. I'm just out for a walk. But I doubt if you'd ever find the right spot if I wasn't there to point them out. Judge, you can't go fishing in that cape you're wearing. Oh, the cape is removable, Gildy. See? Over. Oh, hip boots, fishing jacket, landing net. And I just happened to bring my fishing rod. Yo. I was using it this morning for a walking stick. <laughs> yes, yes. Bertie, coddle an egg for the judge. Get on the lake. Yeah, yeah, Leroy. Yeah. <clears throat> Heavy rowing. That's because you brought so much equipment along. Why the binoculars, Gildy? Well... What's the matter? Are the fish you catch so small you need binoculars to see them? <laughs> oh, all right, Judge. With all that wind, wouldn't you like to row for a while? Thank you, Gildy. But I'm the navigator. It's up to me to direct you to a good fishing spot. Yeah. Look at the old goat standing up in the boat. He thinks he's Washington crossing the Delaware. <laughs> sit down, Judge. Gildy, you made me sit on the lunch. <laughs> oh, for corn's sake, now we're going to have fresh ham sandwiches. <laughs> Ooh, all right, Leroy. Toss out the anchor. Here, where all the people are. Toss it out, Leroy. Gildy, surely you don't expect to catch fish right off the picnic ground. Why not? I wonder where Gloria and Bert are. Gildy, why are you scanning the shore? Uh, no reason, Judge. Let's bait up and start fishing. Well, I'm just to get it. But if I had my way, we'd be fishing across the lake by those rocks. Yeah, over by the big stumps. There's a lot of bass over there. Now, Leroy, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I think I'll try catching. Low bridge. You're wasting your time, Gildy. You'll never catch a fish here. Well, it won't hurt to try. Hey, there's something on your line, huh? Oh, darn it. Say, there's somebody over there under a tree. Wonder? No, Gloria's a blonde. Gildy, what are you staring at? Reel him in. Unc, your fish is going out into deep water. Oh, yes. Now, now you've got him coming. Darn fish. Won't even let me see who's on shore. The biggest bass yet, Gildy. That makes six for you, two for Leroy, and one for me. What a dull morning. Why do the fish have to pick on me? I'll take them off the hook, Unc. You can take my rod, too, Leroy. I think I'll relax and look through my binoculars a while. Gosh, imagine giving up a hot fishing pole to look through binoculars. I don't see him anyplace. I wonder if he's buried her in the sand. If it hadn't been for these darn fish, I'd have located them long ago. Gildy, if you're looking for Miss McKinley and Bert Huggins, why not look behind you? What? Here they come in a boat. Say, it is Gloria. Well, imagine meeting her out here. Yeah, and Mr. Huggins. Yes, yes. Hello there. Hello, Miss McKinley and Mr. Huggins. Gloria, what are you two doing out in a boat? We've been fishing. Gloria, you've been fishing? You too, Huggins? Oh, uh, yeah, fishing. What's the matter with Bert? I'm afraid he doesn't feel very well. Seasick? Oh, too bad. Oh, let's get to shore, Gloria. Oh. Well, all right. Oh. We didn't get a strike, Rock Morton. You didn't? Gosh, look at our string. Oh, they're beautiful. Did you catch all those, Leroy? Heck no. The water commissioner caught most of them. Rock Morton, you did? Oh, only six of the nine. Oh, Gloria, let's go to shore. The, the boat's rocking. Oh. oh, brother, he looks like a pale blue point oyster. <laughs> I guess 
guess we'd better go. Miss McKinley, you seem to enjoy fishing. Oh, I do. Well, why don't you step into the boat with Gildy, and Leroy and I'll go ashore with Miss Hagen. Why, Judge? Yeah, I'm getting hungry, and I don't want to eat those sat-on sandwiches. You come with me, Leroy, and I'll buy you all the hot dogs you can eat. Hey, King! Have fun, Gildy. What a fine old man. <laughs> You don't mind, Bert? Oh, no, I'd be happy to have someone row the boat. All I want to do is get on shore. Hurry, Leroy. Okay. Be careful, Leroy. Let me take your hand, Gloria. Upsy daisy. (laughs) Thank you, Doc Morton. Oh, this is going to be exciting. You bet. You take one or Leroy, and I'll take the other. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bert. I just want to get to shore. <laughs> he doesn't feel like talking. <laughs> now then, Doc Morton, I'm completely in your hands. You are. How do I go about catching fish? Oh. Just drop my line over here? Well, I think this spot is fished out. Let's pull up anchor and... Drift over behind those willows. Whatever you say. With my luck today, it wouldn't surprise me if I had a bass on the anchor. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, there. Now we'll just let our lines drag behind the boat as we drift along. Oh, we're going to troll. Yeah. We just set the rods in the bottom of the boat, lean back, relax. Oh, this is nice. You bet. Gloria, imagine we're in a canoe, floating on some tropical lagoon. Come with me, where moonbeams light the Haitian sky, and the starlit waters linger in. I've never heard you sing so well, Throckmorton. I wonder if it's the water. No. (laughs) It's the inspiration. Uh Yeah, I think I'll sit a little closer. Balance the boat. Oh? If I play my cards right, I may get that kiss that Bert missed. Gloria? Yes, Throckmorton? Gloria. Oh, All those confounded fish. (laughs) The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Wonderful partner for salads and cold cuts. That's deviled eggs. And for some of the most delicious deviled eggs you ever tasted, make them with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a lively, teasing flavor, a peppy flavor that's just right for those eggs. It's a different flavor, too, one you won't find in any other salad dressing. Get a jar of delicious, distinctive Miracle Whip tomorrow. For extra good deviled eggs and for some of the best-tasting salads you've ever put a fork to, there's nothing like Miracle Whip. We'd better get ready for dinner, Clark Morton. Yeah, what's the hurry? I'd rather sit here in the couch with you. But Judge Hooker's worked so hard in the kitchen. Well, he's having fun. First time in years he's cooked on more than one burner. <laughs> Wait, where's Bert? He's folded up in the porch swing. This proves, Gloria, when you're going out in the water, you need a water commissioner. Oh, Clark Morton. Gloria. <laughs> Come to the table. Fish are ready. I'll never catch another fish as long as I live. <laughs> the Great Gilda's Leave is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. 
Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Dick Legrand, Gloria Blondell, and George Neese. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday throughout the summer for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Having a picnic, make those picnic sandwiches taste extra good with Miracle Sandwich Spread. Miracle Sandwich Spread is made by Kraft from America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip, and spicy relishes. See what a wonderfully different flavor, what tang Miracle Sandwich Spread adds to your meat or cheese sandwiches. Or use it alone between slices of bread for a sandwich that's really thrifty and quick and easy to fix. Stop at your grocer's first thing tomorrow and take home a jar of delicious Miracle Sandwich Spread. Tonight, hear the best of Groucho on NBC.